It's the weekend and time for your Barbados Today Evening News update for Friday, March 18. It won't be business as usual for the tourism sector. Today, Tourism and International Transport Minister Senator Lisa Cummins outlined a comprehensive plan to move the sector beyond its traditional focus to maximizing what she called the business of tourism. She outlined a new focus while delivering the State of the Industry Address at the Hilton Barbados. We have to have a conversation around, especially in a post-COVID environment, how to get more from less. So even if we were to exceed our 2019 record year of, of, uh, of uh, 1.2 million visitors by the time the pandemic set in, what are we trying to extract from that volume? Even if we were to have lower numbers, are we looking at a higher quality of visitor? Are we looking at a longer stay of visitor? Are we looking at monetizing services that don't require people to move at all? Are we looking at exporting our goods and services using our, our traditional source markets and thereby expanding our market, doing the same things? It is the business of tourism that we are developing as we talk about. And we're trying to do it sustainably. The upper chamber met for the first time today after Monday's court ruling, which deemed the Senate, with just 18 of 21 members, installed properly constituted. Legislators debated a constitution amendment bill to lower the age requirement for the Senate. Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Senator Lisa Cummins, made clear that the youth voice is critical to the country. The government is proposing in this amendment bill to introduce, for the first time, the opportunity for young people here in Barbados to bring their voices not only to social media, not only to written newspaper articles, not only to their public advocacy, not only to boards and to directorates, not only to sitting in fora where they are given opportunities to share their views and then they go away. We are giving an opportunity, Mr. President, because we believe that there is agency and there is value in our youth we want to be able to bring that voice into the highest decision-making body in our government, which is the Senate of Barbados. And in his first contribution to debate in the upper chamber, Senator Andwele Voice urged his colleagues that inclusion and representation of various groups is key to true democracy. He told the chamber the amendment to the Constitution is a way to get more youth involved in the decision-making process. We wring our hands often in this country about how to get the nation's young people to participate in democracy. The amendments before the House this afternoon, Mr. President, represent one way that we can do, one necessary way that we can do just that. Our Prime Minister has called us all, but particularly our nation's young people toward active citizenship. We cannot achieve active citizenship, Mr. President, if a swath of the nation's population is required, to sit, required by law to sit on the sidelines. The upper chamber also assessed the national budget during debate on the Appropriation Bill 2022. Independent Senator Crystal Drake today suggested that one of government's key measures in the financial package, the pandemic contribution levy, could have been structured in a different way. Was there enough scope to look at assets and taxing assets that are stocked, they are reserved for those in society who have the wherewithal to pay a lower rate but it will gain you a higher percent, a, a higher rate of return in terms of the amount of tax that you get back because you're now looking at a wealthier set of individuals. So you're taxing things like fixed deposits that have hundreds of thousands of dollars in them. You're talking about personal trust, Mr. President. And if persons say, no, I don't like that idea, who are wealthy in our society, my next question then, Mr. President, would be, would you rather live in a society where people are hungry and the proportion of that society is growing daily, their children are hungry, and as Bob Marley said, a hungry man, Mr. President, is an angry man. 
And now for today's COVID-19 update, the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 97 new cases of the virus, 46 females and 51 males, from the 713 tests conducted on Thursday. Of the positive cases, 15 persons were under the age of 18 and 82 were 18 years and older. There were 51 people in isolation facilities, while 1,068 were in home isolation. As at March 17, the viral illness had claimed the lives of 326 people. There's regional and international news after this short break. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure cure oxygen natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy immunity and performance the next generation of hydration cure oxygen nature's ultimate water To regional news, Jamaicans are keeping a close eye on the new subvariant of the Omicron strain of the virus that has already triggered a rise in infections in China and Europe. As citizens prepare to resume a range of activities with the lifting of restrictions, Jamaicans are looking forward to a return of normalcy. We get the details from Television Jamaica. With restrictions under the DRMA to end Friday, Jamaicans have been reacting to the new threat. Right, mentally, we have to all be prepared mentally, right, and we all have to actually come together as one and not stigmatize, not stigmatize anybody, right, because that is the thing that really caused the problem in the first place. Two years after, you have to be futuristic, and so we, we would have recognized, not just from the government's perspective, but would have recognized that this seemed to be something that is going to be here for a while. We wish it would go, but um, lifting some of the restrictions, I believe I was looking in that direction. I believe personally that um, COVID done. That's my personal view. You know, I still go out and wear my mask, you know, and I still would help, will encourage persons to wear their mask and do whatever they can not to catch it. But personally, as people living in Jamaica, I don't think, you know, it, it's really going to bother us too much. And after two years of restrictions, many citizens are just looking forward to life returning to normal pre-pandemic. I'm just looking for the entertainment sector to reopen. How has this pandemic changed my life two years later? In a positive way, you know, it opened my eyes to know lots of conspiracies are out there. You know, lots of lies have been told about this pandemic. You know, lots of persons have suffered during this pandemic. You know, things that, you know, regulations that are in place didn't have to be in place. So, um, it doesn't matter how long it takes. I, I believe it's, if we work as a nation, if we work as a country, um, we might not see normalcy as is expected or as was before, but I believe we, we can get close to it. On the international front, the United States again warned China against aiding Moscow in its invasion of Ukraine. The U.S. Press Secretary addressed the matter earlier today. Certainly, uh, our concerns about uh, China assisting in any way uh, Russia as they uh, invade a foreign country uh, is of, of significant concern and would uh, the response to that would be uh, consequences. This is an opportunity for President Biden to assess uh, where President Xi stands. Uh, there's been, of course, rhetorical support or the absence of clear rhetoric and, and denunciation or the absence of denunciation by China of what Russia is doing. Uh, this flies in the face, of course, of everything China stands for, including uh, the basic principles of the UN Charter, including the basic principles of respect for sovereignty of nations. And so the fact that China has not denounced what Russia is doing in and an, in of itself speaks volumes. And it also speaks volumes not only in Russia, or in Ukraine, but around the world. They also echoed um, some of the conspiracy theories about uh, chemical weapons and U.S. and Ukrainian intentions. So for any country, it's a question of where uh, you want to be as the history books are written. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. 
We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.